husbands. Before that comes submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And just as Silla said, it is about serving each other. And we can't serve each other if we don't know what each other's needs are. Yeah. And the Bible never says, husbands, get your wives to submit to you. It never says that. Paul never says that. Peter never says yeah. that. It says actually the opposite. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And if, as I said, if we only had that, only had these verses in the Bible, submit to each other, husbands love your wives, our societies would be transformed. Children would grow up in yeah. safe homes, safe places. Wow, thank you. Let's build on that. Um, in this particular season of the lockdown, we have seen people lose jobs, people lose businesses, and it creates an immense pressure on the family. And sometimes, especially when there's no income, when there's no money, there's no provision in the home, it just creates a lot of challenges. Nikki, how should you deal with these kind of things? A man has lost a business, has lost an income, he's back home, and the family, there's pressure, and now without any other provision. Uh, maybe in the UK, you know, you've had a way people are getting a bit of the money, the government is helping, but on many parts of the world, like Africa, it means you're done. And if you work like a church leader, it's, uh, you're only one salary away from yeah. poverty. Yeah. Now, you, because this is also very true to Christian leaders. What yeah. is your perspective and what is your advice? My goodness, Kingston, these are huge, huge challenges which people are facing. And as, as we know, as you've said, many people are facing this uh, today. And our hearts go out to them, our prayers uh, are for them. I think as a couple, the single most important thing that you can do is to work together on the situation. Very often there can be shame involved. And that stops a couple really talking about the situation as it is. And a couple, they have to seek to work together mm -hmm. because first of all, they have the promise that God will provide. They don't, we don't know how God will provide, but he does promise that he will provide. And so when a couple pray together and work together and then make a plan, again, like we were talking about earlier for the day, make a plan. What have we got? How are we going to use what we've got? And of course, this is where uh, the extended family, of which you are so much stronger in Africa than we are in the UK, and we love that. This yeah. intergenerational helping each other. And within the church, of course, we are a family together. I, and I working think, out how we help each other. Sorry to interrupt. Name. I think one of the things, um, every marriage, needs a support system it's a bit like a trellis for say vines and fruit to grow well they need a support yeah. system and and for for marriages when you get under the kind of pressure you've described and that this lockdown has brought it's very easy to just isolate yourself yeah. because of all the challenges and the fear and the shame and the everything and, and our encouragement would be to reach out for support and help and, and the connecting and staying connected with other people and different people, you know, older people, peers, the church community and so on is so important, both the staying together mm. as a couple, but also reaching out and not being afraid to reach out and to say we need some help. And can we just say on the other side, there are now many Christians we know in the UK who are reaching out mm. to give help, to help couples to make a budget with whatever they have, the small resources to make a plan going forward. And I think this is where the church, God's people can really help reaching out to others. Those who are better with figures, with money, with budgeting can help those who are not so good. And anxiety of yes. course, breeds fear, which then breeds tension and conflict. And mm -hmm. that's where you, you know, really we need to pray as the church that we can mm -hmm. come and bring uh, everything we've been talking about, but the yeah. peace and the love and the grace of God. And we'd say to couples, don't be afraid to get help. Yeah. Get yeah. help. 
talk to people about the situation. It can put a different perspective on it. Good. Thank you. Getting help is a very important thing. You said you've been married for 44 years. So, you know, you can't fake it for 44 years. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, what, what has kept you going? I'm sure not everything has always been nice and dandy. There have been situations where you've had trouble. Could you share with us an experience, a real experience you went through, and how did you resolve that? Uh, we, um, uh, uh, Sarah and I are very different. <laughs> As with every couple, uh, just to give you one little example, uh, Scylla is an extrovert and an external processor. So she just, if she uh, has an idea, she just wants to talk it out and she's, she's thinking it out as she goes along. And sometimes what she says at the end is completely different to what she said at the beginning because <laughs> she's working it out. I'm completely the opposite to that. I, I tend to try to work things out in my head often just on my own and then tell Scylla what I think she says that's not a discussion that's just your conclusion <laughs> and sometimes these differences me burying things Scylla being very open have uh, caused real conflict and we've one of the things that we've realized I, I could give you many examples of that <laughs> over yeah. the years but one of the things that we have learned is that sometimes if there's an issue that has come between us rather than attacking each other we have to take this issue put it in front of us focus on the issue talk about the issue rather than attacking each other and then if i could say one other absolute key for our marriage as i believe it is for every marriage and that is forgiveness love mm -hmm. keeps no record of wrongs sometimes that's the hardest thing to do that choice we have to make to let something go to forgive. And then sometimes to go on choosing to forgive again and again, it's gradually the memories have less power. And, and I've learned to say sorry. I think yeah. we, we both have learned yeah, to yeah. say sorry much quicker and to say, mm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to do it like yeah. this. Or I didn't mean to uh, not phone you to tell you I was gonna be late or whatever it is, to own it and say mm. sorry and then the forgiveness mm. and that can clear things so quickly and we've really learned that thank you that's so powerful now as we just try and bring all this together there's such a rise of intolerance marriages are ending quickly family mm. is threatened people are breaking away so there's so much nikki is there hope for marriages uh, what can couples do to ensure that we keep marriages on track? There is so much hope always. And one of the, one of the things that we find most powerful on the marriage course is where we, we see a couple, sometimes to start with, they're almost sort of sitting face to back to back, they're not talking. <laughs> and gradually as the course goes on, they start to open up to each other they start to discover what it is that each other really thinks and feels. And often in marriage, I, I think we think we know what mm -hmm. our husband or wife thinks. And if I could say this, after 44 years of marriage, the danger is greater. I think I know what Sarah is going to say, but actually I don't. I don't know what she is thinking and feeling. I've got to ask her, I've got to discover. And we have seen marriages completely turned around. We've seen separated couples who've come on the course seeking to get back together. And they've, just, they've started talking, they've started communicating, they've started asking each other questions and, and listening to the answer. And, and really what I, I want to just sort of say the same thing that Nikki's saying, but put it in different mm -hmm. words. What we're talking about is deep emotional connection. Yeah. Connection at a deep emotional level, not just on a superficial level that we're keeping everything kind of going on the surface, but actually inside, in our hearts mm. and, and yeah. our deepest um, longings, fears, hopes, mm. dreams and so on. And that emotional connection brings this openness, the ability to be open with each other and to trust each other and to look forward to that growing and developing. And, and I would say mm. we passionately believe marriage is good. The commitment of marriage, the vows we make is a safe, safe place 
for that emotional intimacy, that emotional mm. connection to grow, for the trust to grow, mm. and for the future to be an exciting prospect together. Wow, thank you so much. Now, Nikki, uh, time doesn't allow us to do so much, but I want you to take a minute and just tell us about the marriage course and how the marriage course works, because there's so many people here who are hearing the marriage course and they wonder what is this animal all about? <laughs> 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 well, actually, Kings, I ought to say straight up that there are two courses. One is the pre-marriage course. That is for couples who are either engaged or wanting to explore getting married. And the other is the marriage course. And th these courses, we, we set them up so that it's like a date night for couples. Like mm -hmm. they uh, when we were able to do physical courses, we'd set it up with uh, tables, for tables for two, flowers, candles, things like that. Now, couples are doing it online in their own home. We still encourage them to make it into a nice environment, like a sort of romantic evening together. And then the course is about different principles about marriage, uh, the, the strong, uh, what Silla's talked about, how we build emotional connection, yeah. communication, resolving conflict, forgiveness, the need to apologize and forgive. We both have to do that, the men and the women, the husband and wife wider family, how to build a good sexual relationship, how to discover how each other feels love, those love languages. We talk mm. about these different aspects. And during each session, each, each uh, evening, there is lots of opportunity for the couples to talk, to have their own private conversations. This is not a group discussion. It's these discussions between a husband and a wife, just like we've been uh, talking about the importance of. Sometimes they're five minute discussions, sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. Wow, thank you so, so much. I think we need to have a full day for the marriage course discussion. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I can see the number of questions, but time doesn't allow us. Sila, I'd like you to just end for us this session by praying for marriages because strong marriages build strong societies and build strong nations. And so we just want you to close for us and pray for this family, and especially for the Christian leaders who are on this platform today, whose marriages are facing real challenges. And so pray for us as we close. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you gave us the gift of marriage, that it's your design and your plan. And we thank you that it's good. And Lord, I want to thank you for every marriage represented on this call this conference mm. today and i thank you for these marriages thank you that you are passionate about them you brought these couples together as a partnership that you want to use you want to bless them in their marriage their love for one another their family life and you want to use them to be a huge blessing to many, many others. So I pray for them today that you would deepen, refresh and renew the love they have for one another and that they would see in building their marriage, deepening their marriage love, that they are a sign, they are a light of the good news of your love, Jesus. And so I pray you'd use them as a huge blessing in their places of where they live their cities and, and in their countries and we ask it in jesus name amen amen, amen. thank you so much uh, nikki and Silla. we wish you well as you go and i'll be inviting my colleague kobile to tell us how we can connect to this resource of a marriage course and many other resources that we have god bless you Travel thank well. you, thank you King, so wonderful to be god with bless. you thank you well bless you Oh, wow, that was such an amazing session with Nikki and Silla Lee. Now, if you have any questions about the marriage course, the pre-marriage course, and how to find out more, please go to alphaconference.org. There you'll find the links to get to the marriage builder and to the marriage course website uh, that allows you to get started with running the marriage course and even running it online. I hope you guys were incredibly inspired by that as well. Now, listen, alphaconference.org is where we've put 
all the information on anything that you've heard today, including how to run Alpha, how to get started, how to get connected to a team in the country that you're in in Africa. So make sure to go to alphaconference.org to find out exactly how to get in touch with uh, Alpha training, Alpha resources, and Alpha information.